the combustion reaction. So before we can talk about combustion, we need to just go over what is a chemical reaction? What does that mean? So a chemical reaction is when we rearrange atoms. And so we start with reactants, the things that's what we refer to the things we're starting with, the chemicals we're starting with. And after we rearrange the atoms, the things that we formed we call products. Now you can start with elements, or you can start with compounds, you can end with elements, you can end with compounds, but the key idea is that at some point, chemical bonds are being broken and chemical bonds are being formed. And when we change the chemical bonds, we change what the substance is. Now the way we represent chemical reactions are with chemical equations. So there are a few examples down here. I can see that in this reaction, I have carbon reacting with oxygen. Those are the two reactants. And the product is carbon dioxide. So in order for that reaction to happen, the oxygen atoms in the oxygen molecule have to get broken apart. And then they have to form new bonds with the carbon atom to form the carbon dioxide. So we have some bonds that are breaking. And then we have, over here, we have some bonds that are forming. So that's, that's sort of the typical way to think about uh, a chemical reaction happening. You've got reactants. Uh, the bonds have to break first so that the atoms can separate. And then the atoms will get put back together in a new combination. So new bonds form when we form the products. And carbon dioxide is a new compound with totally new properties compared to both carbon and oxygen. Another reaction over here, this shows the combustion of hydrogen. So when we start with hydrogen gas and we react it or we explode it in the presence of oxygen gas, the hydrogen molecules break apart and the oxygen molecules break apart and, we, and then they get put back together into the form of water molecules where there are bonds between oxygen atoms and hydrogen atoms. So where we're going to eventually is that we'll be drawing these things out and looking at the bonds. So this is why we did those Lewis structures, Lewis dot structures and structural formulas, so that we can think through that there are actually bonds between atoms at the beginning. There's a double bond between the atoms in the oxygen molecule. And all of those bonds have to be broken in order for this reaction to take place. So providing a spark or a flame provides the initial energy needed which can begin to break apart these bonds. The atoms all become separated. So we have all these separate H's and O's. And then as they're moving around, they begin to form new bonds with one another. So then the oxygens can start to bond up to the hydrogens. And so in the end, we have the, the there were three molecules on the left, two of hydrogen and one of oxygen. Their bonds were broken and we formed new bonds between the oxygen atoms and the hydrogen atoms, and that's how we formed the water. And once again, water has very different properties from hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen is a gas that explodes, oxygen is a gas that lets things burn, and water we know is a liquid that puts out fire. So it, completely different properties from each other, um, but that's kind of the process of how we go from reactants, breaking their bonds, and putting together new bonds, new arrangements to form products. Now, one thing about chemical equations then, and chemical reactions, is that they must be balanced because uh, we can never create or destroy atoms. That's called the law of conservation of mass. And so if we count on the left-hand side, there are one, two, three, four hydrogen atoms. And afterwards, there are still one, two, three, four hydrogen atoms. So they're balanced. None of the hydrogen atoms have been lost, and we haven't gained any new ones. And we can count that there are two oxygen atoms on the left, and there are still two oxygen atoms on the right. So that's the idea of balancing a chemical equation. The same number of atoms of each element are on the left and on the right. Okay, so combustion is a very particular kind of chemical reaction. Combustion is when something burns and that really means it's reacting with oxygen. And the elements that you're burning, so the elements in your fuel, that's how we usually refer to something that's burning, end up forming bonds to oxygen. So when we combust carbon, which is like when we burn coal, the carbon reacts with the oxygen and forms mostly 
carbon dioxide as the main product. Now the carbon has bonded to as much oxygen as it can bond to. When we burned hydrogen and we combusted hydrogen, we also reacted it with oxygen, and the hydrogen atoms formed as many bonds as they could to oxygen, which was one bond. So when we burn things that have both carbon and hydrogen in them, we will end up forming both carbon dioxide and water as the main products of that reaction. So take CH4, which is methane. So when we burn this, when we undergo a combustion reaction, that means we're reacting with oxygen. So O2 is always one of the reactants in a combustion reaction. And all of the carbon that we burn, or that's in the fuel, will end up as CO2 in a theoretical, complete, perfect combustion reaction. So all of the carbon atoms end up in carbon dioxide molecules. So that's CO2 on the right. And all of the hydrogen will end up in water molecules. So I'm going to write water as the other product of the reaction. So again, the things on the left we call reactants. The things on the right we call products. And so combustion is really the only kind of reaction that we're looking at in this unit. That's our main use for fossil fuels is that we burn them, we combust them, and that gives us a lot of energy. And so it, it's pretty simple to remember a combustion reaction because the second reactant is always oxygen. And the two products of complete combustion are carbon dioxide and water. Okay. Now the problem with this equation right now is that it's not balanced. If you count, there's one carbon on the left, one carbon atom, and there's one on the right. So carbon is fine. There's four hydrogen atoms in methane, but I only have two here in the water molecule. So at this point, I need to balance the chemical equation, and the way I do that is by adding large numbers in front of the chemical formulas. You can see it's been done up here in the equation above, these large numbers we call coefficients. So if I have four hydrogen atoms on the left-hand side, I also need to have four hydrogen atoms still in my products. So that means I need to form two water molecules. So two water molecules would look something like this. Quick little drawing. And now we have one, two, three, four hydrogen atoms. So here's our methane that we started with. There were the four hydrogen atoms, and now I've got the four still on the product side. So now the hydrogen is balanced. If I count up oxygens, I have this CO2 here. So I've got one, two, three, four oxygen atoms on the right, and as it's written right now, I only have two on the left. So again, I can't make this number of four because O4 doesn't exist. That's not a real thing. So I'm not, I'm not allowed to change the subscripts to make the equations balanced. But I am allowed to say, well, it must be that two oxygen molecules react because that's where I get four oxygen atoms from. So I've got one, two, three, four O's on the left, and I have four O's on the right. So the way we balance chemical equations is with coefficients, which are these large numbers we put in front of the formulas and it multiplies that formula. So two O2s means two oxygen molecules. Two of those particles are reacting with one methane molecule. That makes one CO2 molecule, and it makes two water molecules. And that is a balanced chemical equation. Now, you're going to see other letters, like in these ones above, you saw there was an S over here and a G over here. That has to do with the state that the reactant is in and the products are in. And so CH4 methane is a gas, oxygen is a gas, CO2 is a gas, and when the water forms in combustion reactions, it's typically in the gas phase because it's so hot. Okay, let me shrink that down and show you a nice shortcut that works for combustion reactions, for balancing combustion reactions. So the rule for us when we're doing these complete 
combustion reactions is that all of the carbon ends up in the CO2 and all of the hydrogen ends up in the water. So check it out. This is a nice little equation that we can use. So if we call the number of carbons X, because they all end up in the CO2s, whatever the little number, the little subscript here is on our, in our fuel, that number is going to end up here in front of the carbon dioxide. And we can see that in the previous one. There was no number written here. That meant that number was a one. And so we also see there's no number written in front of the CO2 because that's a one. Okay, next, if I want to get the water molecules, so Y was here, we always take that number and we divide it by two to get the correct number in front of water. So in the previous one, this was four, and notice that in front of the water molecules was half that much. It was four divided by two, so we got two. Now, the last one is kind of the trickiest to get. You have to figure out the oxygens. Now, you can just figure it out. You can count up all your oxygens on the right-hand side um, and use that to get the number of oxygens on the left. It turns out that in a fuel like this, it's typically going to end up being X plus Y divided by 4 will be this number right here. So how does that work? Well, in our previous example, X was 1 from the carbon, one carbon dioxide molecule. So we'll need uh, a molecule of oxygen for every molecule of carbon dioxide. And then if I took Y was 4 from CH4 and I divide that by 4, that's another 1. And so that told us that we were going to need 2 oxygens. So that's one way to get there. If that's too tricky, then you can add up the numbers that you get in your products and divide it by two to get the number that goes in front of your oxygen. Okay, so that's uh, kind of a, it might sound kind of tricky, but if we do a couple practice, you'll see that it should make your life a little bit easier. So let's do a couple more together. We'll see how it goes. So C3H8 plus O2. So let me try to use that formula so I can quickly balance this equation. Well, I see that there's a three next to the carbon, so that's gonna be three CO2. And I see there's an eight with the hydrogen, so that means I'm gonna need eight divided by two, four water molecules. Now, if I try to use the equation, I would say, well, there's three from the carbon, and then eight divided by four, which is two, so I'm going to need five oxygens. So I'm going to stick the 5 there. Now, if I want to double check that, over here I've got 3 CO2s, which is a total of 6 oxygen atoms. And I've got 4 uh, water molecules, which is 4 oxygen atoms. And that's 10 oxygen atoms total. And how do I get 10 oxygen atoms? Well, uh, 5 oxygen molecules on the left will also give me 10 oxygen atoms. So that's how we balance that. That shows the combustion of propane. Shrink it down. Okay, now sometimes, just to jump ahead to one that I know is a little bit trickier, number four. If we look here, oop, there we go, if I look here, then I get C2H6 plus O2, and we're going to make CO2, and we're going to make water. So that's our combustion reaction. So I'm going to take the number here from the C and put that in front of the CO2, and I'll take the number here, six, I'll cut that in half, and I'll put it in front of the water. So two CO2s and three waters. Now the trick here, either way I approach it, if I count up the oxygens, I've got two times two, I've got four here. Three times one, I've got three from the water. I've got seven. So the trick, like, how do I get seven oxygens if I have to come, if they have to come in twos in these O2 molecules on the left? Well, Mathematically, the way it works is if you use fractions, if you use halves. So if you get stuck with this, if you get an odd number of oxygens, you can divide it by two, and that will be your number of O2 molecules. And I'm sorry if that got a little messy. Let me rewrite it. So seven halves O2, or three and a half oxygen molecules. Now, most of the time we say we should balance things with whole numbers, but we are now balanced, so all we have to do now, if we want to get rid of that fraction, is we can multiply through everything by two. So if instead of using one C2H6, I now have two C2H6, seven halves times two is seven, 
So that was pretty easy to get rid of. And now I get four, and now I get six. So this method on top is balancing using fractions, and this uh, method on bottom is balancing using whole numbers. So you can still use the sort of equation to figure things out. Um, if you get a fraction, then you're gonna multiply through everything by two, all the coefficients times two, and you'll get it with whole numbers. So that's how we write a combustion chemical equation. Remember, it's always the reaction of oxygen, and then we are combining the carbon and the hydrogen fully with oxygen to make CO2 and H2O as our products, and we can use the, uh, the kind of system down here to figure out the number of carbon dioxides and the number of water molecules very quickly, and then the last thing to figure out is this number of oxygen to make sure that our equation is balanced on both sides.